Hello and welcome to this review of my DuckyPad Pro MacroPad. This was donated by the creator, thanks Alan. I reviewed the original DuckyPad, to which this is kind of a sequel basically, years ago, but this is quite something different despite looking similar on the surface. This new one comes from a Kickstarter campaign that raised £100,000, so there was clearly a good amount of demand for it. One thing, though certainly not the only one, that sets it apart from other macro pads is that it comes with a little screen that shows the function of each key. As it's capable of multiple profiles, this is very useful because if you have loads of them, you obviously can't write all the functions on each keycap. Speaking of which, the keycaps are transparent blanks, and this is done to allow the backlight through more easily. Now, this is one of those few instances where a backlight is actually a functional part of the keyboard. Namely, it helps you to see what profile you're in at the moment, and it also allows you to color code the functions on each profile. I already do the same with my own macro pad as well, and found this to be very useful on the first ducky pad. Now, the original from 2020 felt a bit like a hobbyist's project, and it was a fun and useful, but clearly amateur-made piece of kit. However, Alan has gathered a lot of feedback on the ducky pad over the years and took it to heart, resulting in this pro version, and as a result, this new one is vastly improved as well as expanded. He's now trying to have the most functionally comprehensive macro pad on the market, and frankly I'm having difficulty seeing what else could possibly compete for that title. I should mention that, like its predecessor, it is still a DIY kit. The most visually obvious thing, apart from the addition of the two rotary encoders here, is that it went from 15 to 20 keys, and that's already a big improvement. One column extra makes a huge difference. Even if it's just to be able to function as a full numpad, which as you can see is one of the pre-programmed layers by the way, is really nice. Especially with the increased layer count, this gives it a lot more functionality, but really just having more keys per layer itself is already excellent. As for the total amount of macros you can put in it, there are 20 keys plus 6 different rotary encoder commands per profile, plus another possible 32 across expansion modules for 58 macros per profile and up to 64 profiles so you end up with a maximum possible macro count of 3712. Holy sheet, that's a hell of a thing. Not bad for a little 11 by 10 centimeter gadget or in Imperial unit, some amount of clarinets, trombones, flagpoles, marimbas, trumpets, and or trumpet players with ego? Man, I just don't understand you Imperial folk. It comes pre-programmed with 12 profiles, including a welcome screen with instructions and demo functions, one for Discord, Firefox, Chrome, Photoshop, onboard switches, whatever that is, Twitch, uh, WASD cluster and friends, a numpad, like I said, Teams auto hotkey, and Ducky Script, which is the programming environment that was used to make this thing and what gives it its name. So unlike what you may have been thinking, this is not affiliated with the keyboard manufacturer Ducky. The maximum length of the macros is rather staggering. For example, one of the functions includes the entire script for the B film. And I'm really not joking here, that's quite a flex. And that's not even talking about the mini text-based cave adventure game or the fully functional Pong game or the Etch-a-Sketch mode he put into it. One thing to note here is that it's not compatible with QMK or VIA, which are the de facto standards nowadays. However, Alan chose to make his own configuration software in this ducky script programming language because, according to him, the level of customization is so high on this thing that QMK and VIA absolutely wouldn't support it. Which makes sense, because you really can do quite a lot with this thing. It's downloadable, it's only 27 megabytes, and you don't have to install it, just run. So I can use this at work without having to ask IT for temporary admin rights. It's not too hard to use, and there's a very clear set of instructions on the website, but I do have two complaints. First of all, the programming of the keys is done in a sort of programming language rather than using a GUI-type configurator like most softwares do it. For example, if you want a key to type TEST on press, you need to say STRING in capitals, T-E-S-T, -E and simple key presses and whatnot also have their own separate commands. It's not hard, but you need to look it up. 
I put a few things for work and whatnot in it, which was very quick and easy to do, and it works like a charm, so that's really cool. I also put in a profile with arrow keys on it, because I was testing a 60% keyboard that didn't have actual arrow keys on it, which I always think is basically a crime against humanity, so it's nice to have them on here. The second complaint is that the software doesn't automatically sync changes, you need to do it manually, and it takes quite a long time, a good 10 or 20 seconds or something, which adds up if you find yourself doing this a lot. Still, it's a big improvement over the original, where you had to take out the SD card, stick it in the SD card reader, plug that into your computer, upload the new config file there, take out the reader, take out the card, and stick it back into the ducky pad. So it's definitely a lot slicker now, even though other options on the market do this particular thing a bit better. Another big improvement is the plate material. It was originally acrylic, but this was extremely floppy, and it didn't retain switches well at all, so they constantly fell out as the board is hot swappable. However, you can get the new one with aluminium or FR4 plates, and both are sturdy enough that switches won't fall out of this one, so that's good. These are now also provided on the original ducky pad, which you can still get, and which has largely absorbed all the upgrades of this from what I understand. As I mentioned before, you can also get extension modules for it and wire all sorts of switches up to it and whatnot, which is pretty next level to be honest. I mean, you can even get foot pedals for it. It gets more and more niche like this, but I'm sure it's a benefit to some people. Each expansion module apparently has eight channels and they can be daisy chained for multiple ones. You can use it over Bluetooth as well, but if you do, you need to supply your own battery bank, as this would be prohibitively expensive and complicated to do otherwise. I get that, to be honest. For those people who aren't going to use it over Bluetooth, that would be added expenses in bulk anyway. There's an active community for this thing as well, apparently. They've already designed a 3D printed case for it, for which you can download the STL slash CAD files on MakerWorld, and someone even made a milled case made out of metal for it, which is pretty cool. Now, obviously this thing is very modular, so you can get it with many different options. The most bare bones version is $85, getting an aluminium plate instead of an FR4 one is another $15, the keycaps are another $15, switches are $15 to $23, depending on your choice, smooth rather than tactile rotary encoders is an extra three each, same for aluminium rather than 3D printed rotary encoder knobs, and expansion modules are around 30 each each foot pedals 15 apiece. That means that this version, the way you're seeing it right now, is around $150. Not exactly cheap for a macro pad, let alone a DIY one, and even with FR4 or aluminium plates, it's still a chassisless board, it's just a PCB and a mounting plate. However, the functionality is awesome. This thing can do more than 20 other macro pads combined. So even though it still looks rather amateur, if we're honest, it's genuinely a serious piece of kit. It's expensive, but I like it. I think it's an excellent product. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me pressing some random keys on this macro pad. Alan put box navy switches in it, by the way, which is the correct choice. So you're in for a treat.